The International Day of Human Space Fight is a day set aside to celebrate each year at the international level the beginning of space era for mankind, reaffirming the important contribution of space science and technology in achieving sustainable development goals and increasing the well-being of states and people, as well as ensuring the realization of their aspirations to maintain outer space for peaceful purpose. I mean... Whoever discovered space, God bless the person. <laughs> That's all we can say on that. <laughs> you want to add I think that? that has to do with human curiosity. Mm -hmm. if, it ha if they hadn't been curious enough, of I don't think no. we would have understood what yes, space no. was uh, Everything that is, like. that yes. is, you know, science and technology that we are enjoying today was as a result of somebody saying, and sometimes I'm just be thinking, we think our own government, we think with their ambition. <laughs> like, you know, what's their ambition? Like, because this is... Some countries that decided that no, we want to go and explore and explore. see what is out there. Exactly. And look at the Do benefits that the whole world space? is is um, what's it called? The whole world is benefiting from today. That's what I'm saying. Does Nigeria have a, a satellite in space? I don't think so. I don't know about that. Well, that's I, why I, I actually heard that we do. I don't. Ah. Know. I can't remember what they actually call it. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So, so who are we going to start with today? Let me start with Jennifer. Okay. What's your story? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> FG appeals to judicial workers to suspend strike. Mm. So if you've been listening to the news, you know that um, lawyers have been on strike for a while. And now the FG is telling them that they need to come back. Um, there was something um, the government said to them. <sighs> Let me read this. You are important people, and that is why we waited to see if there could be an in-house conciliation with the Chief Justice of Nigeria. But since progress was not made, we decided to exercise our mandate here as Ministry of Labor and Employment. And um, he also said to them that um, they are lawyers and they are supposed to know about the law. So it is quite wrong of them to go on strike, meaning they are probably going against... The law. the law, yeah. But then I also saw in news, I think um, Mackinley said that um, they are already looking into their welfare and their salary, I think salary increase or something like that. So they are expected to come back very soon. And the government also told them that the judicial officers will be back very soon from their Easter holiday and mm. they don't want them to come back and meet strike. Hmm. So we really hope that... Um, they can call off the strike and also meet their demands. Um, I saw something on Twitter, I think that was last week, or I think it was on a Friday, and then someone tweeted um, that the policemen are back on the road. Mm. So just make sure that you comply with all the road rules, and then when they stop you, be very kind and be very nice to them, because if they arrest you and put you in the cell, court is on strike. So exactly. there'll be nobody be to bail you yeah. out. Exactly. Yes. Hmm. So you don't want to hear a dying or mm. exactly. yeah, we start hearing sad stories and all of that. So there are probably a lot of negative um, implications for this move. But I really hope, I really hope for should the government, government have even allow this strike in the first place? No. Because for a for a for an arm of government that is so critical to a lot of things, that is, look at what you just said now. But it's tied to a lot of things. Yeah. Should, should they have allowed the strike to even happen in the first place? It shouldn't have gotten to this point. I can't believe that lawyers will have to go on strike. Hmm. That judicial officers will have to go, go on, on strike. strike. Because <laughs> what? All these things are not necessary. I think if you do due diligence and you do what you're supposed to do at the right time, we won't be having issues like this. We won't be facing hmm. things like this. Just where with this and country. it all stems from the fact that the government... Um, um, or the, the legislation or legislative arm of government is they're earning more, more, more money in comparison to the, the, the judges. Mm. I think I listened to um, a, a radio show today where they talked about something like that mm. and all they kept on happening on was the fact that um, the judges earn less mm. in comparison to the politicians who are in the legislative arm of government. I wish I can actually get Lamy to, 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 because she's always lamented on wanting autonomy for judges. You know, the, the judiciary. That is very, very important because sometimes, you know, mm. some of these people, the reason we don't even get certain kinds of um, justice or whatever is because if these people are the ones paying you, of course you will judge to their favor. And because they've so, politicized I mean, mm, the... That's what I'm saying. The, it's the, been the, segment, so, yeah, the judiciary. It's been, 
All right, so uh, let yes. me hear your story, Isi. Okay, my story goes thus um, Pantami threatens to sue media platforms over alleged ties with Boko Haram. Mm. Now, we all know that oh, over the weekend there was a story that broke out in social media mm -hmm. that said that the um, Issa Pantani. The minister, mm. yes, minister of communication and digital economy is involved or has some sort of link to Boko Haram and that currently he's on the watch list of uh, the United States for allegedly aiding activities with terrorist group, the mm. terrorist group. Mm. So um, this has made Nigerians, you know, um, react in different ways. And there was one thing that actually caught my attention and this was the, um, the statement by... Um, uh, some young man who talked on Twitter and he said that his name is F.S. Yusuf and he said Dr. Pantamin linkage to Boko Haram and Al Qaeda and um, could be true or it could be false but know this he will not stop down he will not step down for investigation there will be no official statement from intelligence agency and there will be no official statement from the federal government mm, because that's all that's all the that's what we see all the time all that's the time well, that, uh, plays things, out, yeah, that plays out yes basically yeah. so that is yeah, it basically well. so he's saying he wants to sue um, and but i think he should actually houses. subject himself to be investigated if it is true you mm -hmm. understand it's not just about suing let them investigate properly to see mm -hmm. if they are because i mean time and time again we've heard that the people behind Boko Haram are big shots, you know, that yeah. because if not, how would they have sustained themselves all this while if they do not have serious mega funds coming yeah. in? So, I mean, these things are just not rocket science. You know, so my own story is actually linked to what we're talking about today. Um, CBN has uh, responded to Governor Baseki's video saying that we are not aware of Baseki's claim of currency printing, that CBN, that the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Federal Ministry of um, Finance, Budget and National Planning has de have denied the knowledge of the claim that Nigeria printed 50 to 60 billion naira last month to cushion its um, financial trouble. I mean, that was the allegation that um, Governor Baseki made. He said um, the question was raised after the Edo State Governor um, Obaseki claimed that Nigeria printed 60 billion naira to augment what the three tiers of government shared in March. Um, he says, when we got our FAC, um, this is now quoting Governor Obaseki, he Baseki. says, when we got our FAC for March, the federal government printed additional 50 to 60 billion to top up for us to share. That's what Governor Obaseki said. He says, you know, he was now talking about, you know, um, uh, how would you be borrowing, you know, that currently we are running... A, 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 At a loss. No, we are running... We, we have a, a debt, um, debt um, what's it called, of about 15 to 16 trillion, mm -hmm. you know, so, and you keep borrowing and borrowing and you do not have any means to pay back, you right? So, I mean, these were really strong allegations. And, yes. I mean, this is a basis for us, you know, um, because it says, imagine a family that is just borrowing without any means to pay back. And anybody is looking at that. Everybody, nobody is looking at that. Everybody is looking at 2023. Everybody is blaming Mr. President as if he's a magician. You know, that's what um, Governor Baseki said. So I'm just looking at it and it's so fantastic because that's the benchmark for the conversation that we'll be having today with Tunji Andrews. Because for us, it's not just about looking at his allegations. Everybody has been throwing, oh, can you imagine the borrow of 56? But the truth is, what is the economic plan? You know, because for what he said, you can't keep borrowing, Jennifer. I do not have a job and I keep coming to you every month on month. And because maybe I have some kind of integrity capital or something, hmm. you keep giving me the money. Mm -hmm. But where is the, um, where, what source am I going to use to replenish all that ha I have borrowed from you? Exactly. That's the simple arithmetic in Nigeria. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have any Cash really flow. strong um, source of Income, Gen revenue gener generation that's cash flow. so why am i collecting money that i know i do not have the capacity to pay back especially when we know that the crude oil currently is is not this like um no, what, a joke no what what he even said you know mm -hmm. which is you know, I, I think i would just you know we'll just probably take a break because it's part of my my opening line because yes. what he said you know when he said about the crude oil that is selling for about 60 to 70 dollars he said that one is a mirage it's a mirage you know, because it's yes. not it's not sustainable before you do anything because most big oil companies are running towards um what's alternative it fuel so <laughs> how would you now sit down and say you want to sit on oil money let's to forget let's not forget so let's not about play the fact paper paperwork diversification electric so cars we'll, are coming in we'll be so talking about this you know when we come back down. from the break we'll be yes. discussing uh we'll be analyzing governor basaki's um 
what's it called now, his um, video that, that went viral over the weekend. Okay. Stay with us and we have our guests with us. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>